welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about putting an SD card adapter into an Amiga 1200. Let's take a look. So this is it. Um, I've actually bought two of these. One of these I already have in the machine so I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is one that I'm going to put in another 1200 um, but it's a tiny unit. I mean you can see how small it is in my hand. Um, it comes with a two and a half inch ribbon as well, the, the 44 pin one. That will get mount directly onto the motherboard. Um, and then an SD card just goes in there oh, 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 like that. Now they need to be formatted um, as fast file system. It won't read directly um, as a fat drive uh, but uh, we can get that sorted later. What we have here is the Amiga kit SD card adapter. Um, as you can see it's insulated underneath so it just sits there on top of the uh, metal housing um, and I've got it plugged into a it's an L-Box um, buffered IDE interface and the reason why I've done that is because it also provides two 40 pin headers for additional IDE drives like CD-ROM drives just in case I want to do that again in the future <laughs> Now that the SD card adapter is installed, let's switch the Amiga on and see how she boots. So the SD card adapter is supplied with an installation process as part of it. Um, you can select a variety of different workbenches to install, um, all the way up to 3.9. But I've only got 3.0, so let's give that a go. Now Amiga Kit have seen fit to uh, ensure that you set up the correct locale preferences. So let's make sure we're on UK and English. And now for the input preferences, and this is the, this basically sorts out your keyboard and mouse. There we go. That's all done. Installation complete. Let's see how fast it boots. And we booted into Workbench. Let's get rid of that background window and see what version we have available. 39.29 Okay, let's see if we can uh, clear up this clutter a bit because it's looking a bit too busy for my liking Start with the font These are just the standard font supplied with Workbench Nope um, yeah, Helvetica for the icon, I think. We just need a small one for that. Uh, system text is what tends to get displayed in the CLI. And then screen text is what you see for the workbench titles um, and the screen titles. Hmm. Can't open that. 
get rid of that. I think I might have saved some patterns and data onto my original workbench disk. Um, so have a word with myself 30 years ago, please. Now let's choose a different screen mode. Um, I think we just leave it in PAL high res, uh, 640 by 256. Um, I don't mind having it in four colors. Uh, if anything, that's just gonna save memory for other things. Um, interlaced, as you can see, is a bit flickery. So uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll stick with this. Overscan uh, determines how much of the screen you can use, but we'll leave that as is. use the high-res pointer just to look slightly better when using a high-res screen slightly pointier oh, I'm quite happy with all that uh, let's clear up these icons a bit because they're not necessarily in the order that I want I think we'll put HDD2 at the bottom uh, workbench partition at the top clear that up a bit and then I'll snapshot those icons. Well, snapshot those icons in place. As you can see, there are three partitions already set up on the SD card: system, HDD, and HDD2. System is where Workbench goes. It's where I've installed Workbench 3.0. Um, I don't have 3.1 available, so um, we're making do with this for now. Um, HDD um, actually comes supplied with some software already. Uh, we've got IDE fix in there uh, for giving you support for uh, larger hard disks and CD-ROM drives. Uh, WHD loads there which we can use to boot games, pretty much any game um, from a hard disk slash SD card system. Um, Directory Opus which is a file management system and Cinemaware uh, which we have a lot or cinemaware games on here, such as Rocket Ranger. Um, now this particular folder, uh, the icons look a bit ropey. I've got quite a low colour um, screen resolution at the moment, so just to kind of keep graphics memory free. Uh, don't really need any more at the moment. Um, I've copied a few more things into the HDD partition as well, like Blitz Basic 2, uh, Deluxe Paint 4, uh, Vista, the original Vista, and started copying some games in there. Now, HDD2 um, I'm pretty much using as a user partition, so I've got some game images in there that I've uh, put together in Deluxe Paint, and also got some Blitz Basic code in there. Um, I'm not going to mess around with those partitions. You, you can't actually change the size of partitions in Workbench without mucking up uh, the entire system. Uh, unfortunately, that's uh, not possible. Um, I'd have to boot off another disk, um, rearrange the SD card, and then reinstall everything. Uh, that would be the only option. But I'm quite happy with how fast things open on this. Um, I don't think there's any, any complaints. Um, it's just all there and it works and it works brilliantly. Now I'll try and give you an idea of um, how basic programs work running off the SD card. Let's go into like, Deluxe Paint here. Loads up incredibly quickly. There we go. Um, it closes Workbench but we can open it up again. And screen drag. It's one of the uh, advantages of the Amiga. Um, the Eagle Eye amongst you may see that the deluxe paint screen here is a different format, different resolution to the screen I've just, just dragged down. This is a benefit of the Amiga custom chipset um, where the copper is able to draw different parts of the screen at different resolutions as we go down the, as the screen gets written. Um, so this one is 320 by 256, this one is 640 by 256. 
pretty um, pretty clever stuff. Um, no, we, can, we can just drag it like this and there's no, no issues, no screen tearing, nothing, just absolutely synced. Really is a wonderful system. Um, so yeah, Deluxe Paint works. Let's load uh, some images. Just a, a test screen I created for Glitz Basic. There we go. Now this does band a bit because it's it's just copying it over in chunks, but um, that's Deluxe Paint. Let's quit that. So why install an SD card adapter into your Amiga 1200? Well, um, unlike a hard disk, it has no moving parts. Uh, it produces very little heat, um, it uses very little power, um, so all of these things combine to make it pretty much the ideal storage device for the Amiga. Um, in addition, the Amiga file, Amiga file system uh, is kind of limited to a, a four gigabyte disk, um, which is perfect for those kind of cards, whether it's SD or CF format. Um, there is the ability to mount larger disks, uh, but it requires additional software on top. So for now, if you're using a stock A1200, stock uh, Workbench 3.0, then I don't see any reason to put a larger disk in, um, unless you're you know, doing large amounts of productivity, which I don't think many people are these days on the Amiga. Um, games themselves don't take up much space either, so um, even though I've got three partitions here with space, ample space on all partitions, I don't think I'm going to fill it anytime soon. So let's talk about the IDE uh, header that I've got installed in there. Um, that provides a 44 pin interface for two and a half inch um, hard drives, and also that's where the SD card adapter is plugged into, uh, but it also gives me two. 40 pin um, headers on there for three and a half inch devices like hard disks and CD ROM drives. Now, I wasn't planning on putting a CD ROM drive onto this machine because I've got a big box A1200 um, which can do that, and I've got a CD32 as well, but I haven't shown you that. Um, but I have a lot of software on CD, whether it's CD32, whether it's for uh, expanded A1200s, and it ranges from games to programs. Um, clearly a lot of that's available online now, but my Amiga's not online, so it kind of gives me that ability to, to use software that I already have. Um, now I'm gravitating towards using the IDE header for that, because I want to keep the PCMCI slot free for future expansions, whether that's copying files over from a CF adapter or even getting a network adapter to plug into it uh, which is sort of always an option um, so I've just got to think of a way to not only mount a uh, parallel ATA um, CD-ROM drive externally um, so preferably in a case of some sort but I have no idea why I'd even get that um, but I also need to trail a cable out the back of the machine, which isn't a problem because the Amiga has an expansion port at the back that's currently just a blank plate, so that's an option. Um, how I power that CD-ROM drive, on the other hand, um, it's currently got me scratching my head. I hope you found today's video helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions about the SD card, about the installation process, or anything else about that, give me a shout in the comments, or put a comment in there for anything else you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching.